Hey horror fans, thanks so much for clicking on this video. My name is Chris right here. How's your 2021 going so far? We're only a couple days in deep. Is it going good? <laughs> Me neither, bro. But we're gonna power through and continue on anyways, because hopefully this will be the year that we'll finally get to see all the amazing horror movies that we we're supposed to see in 2020, but now you can add on a couple of bonus horror movies that we'll be getting in 2021. What I'm going to be doing here for you is rounding out the list along with the release dates here. Now, there are a good chunk with actual release dates, and then there's another good chunk with no release dates, but have a promised release of sometime in 2021. So, I'm going to just need you guys to leave me your opinions down below on which horror movie is the one you're most looking forward to. In the bottom top comment, you'll see my most anticipated list. Be sure to leave me your most anticipated anticipated list out of everything I mentioned here as well as hitting that like button if you just can't wait to be annoyed by that one person in the movie theater who just screams a little too loud at the horror movies oh, we've all been there also this goes without saying but you saw what happened last year these dates aren't set in stone things change around but still let's just try and be a little hopeful right first horror movie up and coming on the list we have here on january 8th we'll be getting the movie entitled the devil's light now this is your traditional first horror movie of the year and usually the first horror movie of every year is an absolute stinker is rarely ever any good with this movie it tells the story of a nun who must confront a demonic force that unsettles ties to her past yeah we could probably name a hundred different horror movies that are just like that next on the list we have the wrong term reboot that is set for January 26th of 2021. Now, I am very much looking forward to this thing because the Wrong Turn franchise is one of my guilty pleasure horror movie franchises. I do enjoy the first three movies very much, and then after that, the sequels just really went downhill, but heck, I still watch them for some reason, and now with this new one, it's said to be a reboot of the franchise. With the story for this one going, despite warnings to stick to the Appalachian Trail, hikers stray off course and cross into a land inhibited by a hidden community of mountain dwellers who use deadly means to protect their way of life. We've already gotten a trailer for this. I thought the trailer was surprisingly nice and really gives us an idea of the thrills and traps that'll be going down when these people go into the woods and start getting hunted down. The only drawback to me is for long-term wrong-term fans, there doesn't seem to be any deformed cannibals this time around. And instead, the people who are the hunters in this movie wear these like antelope type masks. So that kind of brings it back for me. But if the movie's good, I guess I won't care. Then we have A Quiet Place 2 set to come out April 23rd, 2021. Now, fun fact, Quiet Place 2 was the movie I was one day away from seeing because that's when I had my press screening to see it early so I could get a review for you guys. And the next day, theaters were shut down nationwide. And I haven't forgotten about that day since. Still nonetheless, this is the sequel to John Krasinski's A Quiet Place where we continue following the family only months after the events of the first film where they decide to go out in the wild and spread the message of how to defeat these creatures, maybe find a community, and just try to live some sort of normal life. The trailers have already come out for this thing. It looks fantastic. There was even early reviews and buzzes from people saying it was really good. And hopefully we get to see it come April because I am dying to see this film and there's already talks of a third film in the works next film we have here is last night in soho that is also set to come out april 23rd 2021 i don't think they'll be coming out on the same day but nonetheless that's what they have right now this film i'm very excited for because it is being directed by edgar wright who is a fantastic director in my opinion has done Shaun of the dead scott pilgrim was responsible for most of ant-man until he left that project and with this it'll be one of his first ventures into a more serious horror movie instead of a parody horror movie like he did with Shaun of the dead and the story goes as a young girl passionate about fashion design is mysteriously able to enter the 1960s where she encounters her idol a dazzling wannabe singer but 1960s london is not what it seems and time seems to fall apart with shady consequences edgar wright like i said is a very creative director has a real uniqueness to him so really looking forward to this horror movie by him bringing us to may 19 2021 we'll finally get to dive back into the world of saw with the spin-off film entitled spiral from the book of saw now this is an interesting project that a lot of us Saw fans were wanting to see what exactly was going to be going down because this isn't necessarily a reboot or a remake or even a sequel. The best way it's being described to us is a spin-off in the Saw universe. Also, this story and project was only made because Chris Rock out of nowhere had the idea for it, pitched it to the studio, and now that's what we're getting here. You also have Samuel Jackson who will be playing the father of Chris Rock in the movie. I'm just really curious to how they're going to tie this into the Saw universe. If it's going to be as gory as the old franchise, will the film step 
wrap up that some of those sequels in the Saw franchise were not the best. And also another thing to prepare you for when you see this movie, this will be one of the first Saw films where they completely get rid of Billy the Puppet and instead are said to replace it with some other puppet of their own. Then on June 2nd, 2021, we are going to be given The Conjuring 3 entitled Conjuring The Devil Made Me Do It. Now this is the third entry in the main Conjuring franchise where we follow Ed and Lorraine Warren on one of their most fascinating cases that they did in real life and it was the first time in a court case that someone used the excuse the devil made me do it i love the main conjuring films all of them have been really good but the main thing i'm worried about with this third one it is no longer being directed by james wan who did the first two instead it's being handed over to michael chavez who directed la llorona and immediately when i say that there's going to be some people not too happy about that because there weren't many fans of la llorona now, even though i understand that movie wasn't all that great i think the horror sequences in that film were actually well done so i'm curious to see what this director will do with the conjuring 3 but my expectations aren't as high as they would have been if James Wan was directing. Then on August 13, 2021, we will be given a sequel to a movie that I didn't think needed a sequel, but heck, I'm gonna watch it anyways, and that is Don't Breathe 2. Now, if you have not seen the first Don't Breathe, I highly recommend you check it out. It is one of the best horror movies out there, and essentially the premise of that first film is a group of teenagers go in to rob a blind man, only to find out that this blind man is a highly skilled military agent, who even though he can't see, is still a very frightening guy with some dark secrets and for the second film we will again be following the story of the blind man except this time around he seems to be the protagonist of the film instead of the villain with the story going as the blind man has been hiding out for years in an isolated cabin and has taken in and raised a young girl orphan from a house fire. Their quiet existence is shattered when a group of kidnappers show up and take the girl, forcing the blind man to leave his safe haven to save her. This one unfortunately is not being directed by the same director of the first film, Fed Alvarez, who I think is a really gifted horror director. Instead, it's being handed over to Rodi Sayogas. And really, I don't know how to feel about that story and if I'm going to be all up for following the guy who was once the bad guy who's now the good guy but if they can be creative do some new horrifying things i'm all up for it so why not bring on don't breathe too then on august 22nd of 2021 the horror movie that a lot of you guys were anticipating me including was the candy man reboot now this candy man movie we've already gotten trailers for we've seen a lot of great things with it it's being directed by nia da costa and is produced by jordan peele this candy man film is also one of those reboot sequels just like halloween 2018 where it is a reboot but it's also a sequel to the very first movie, ignoring Candyman 2 and 3. With this film, you'll follow Yahaba Abdul as he comes back to Cabrini Green to research the myth of Candyman only to be delved into that world and become Candyman himself. Then on October 1st of 2021, we will be getting Escape Room 2. And let me tell you, Escape Room is already one of my guilty pleasure horror franchises. Like I was mentioning at the beginning of this video, and usually the first horror movie that comes out in January is a pure stinker, is garbage and well escape room was a january horror movie that broke the rule and was actually pretty decent admittedly it had a horrible ending but with escape room 2 we will again be following a group of people trapped in an escape room sort of like a diet version of jigsaw but i still found the rooms to be extremely creative really entertaining to watch and go down in that first film with the second movie we'll be exploring more of the people who are building these escape rooms and why they're deciding to do it then on october 15 2021 we will be getting probably everybody's most anticipated horror movie and that is Halloween Kills. This horror movie right now is just eating away at me because I just want to see this thing with everything that they're promising that is involved with this second Halloween movie that I know is technically Halloween 3. But taking place on the same night as Halloween 2018, we follow Michael Myers who escaped the fire and the basement that Laurie Strode set up with him thanks to some firefighters and the madness of the night continues with Michael Myers just going belligerent and crazy they're saying the carnage and the body count of this movie is like nothing that's ever been done in a michael myers movie and how does that not excite you and just to reassure you a little more jason blum said pandemic or not the movie is coming out a hundred percent in october of this year they can't delay it anymore because we got halloween ends the following year now the next couple of movies i'm gonna list do not have release dates but they've been promised to release in 2021 and those movies include one the collector three another guilty horror franchise of my 
Mind that I highly recommend to you guys if you have not watched it. The Collector is basically an underrated horror villain in my opinion and this guy just basically goes around collecting people. Speaking of other horror franchises that I find to be guilty pleasure, we have Terrifier 2. Now Art the Clown is a terrifying clown to say the least. Understandably his movies are very low budget and you can definitely tell when you watch them but this is one clown that does not hold back and sometimes make Pennywise the Clown look like a Disney Channel character. But Terrifier 2 they're saying to step up the budget a little bit as well as the body count and have a more focused story and I can't wait to see if this one will be a little more mainstream and easier to handle for people out there. Next up we have The Forever Purge that was a movie we were supposed to get in summer of 2020 and will be the final Purge movie at least that's what they're telling us. With The Forever Purge it's basically the apocalypse but with The Purge. We'll be following a world where it's The Purge 24-7 and people are just living in constant fear that everything is basically legal. Out of all the Purge movies we've had so far, that to me sounds the most interesting, sounds the most epic. So I'm definitely curious to see how they're going to conclude the Purge franchise. Speaking of rebooted franchises, we also have the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, good old Leatherface, coming back to us in 2021. They were currently filming the movie last year. This again will be like the fifth time they reboot the Texas Chainsaw Massacre character and they're doing the thing once again where it's a direct sequel to the first movie, even though Texas Chainsaw 3D already went ahead and did that. The movie is set to follow two sisters, one who is a big city girl living that life and then her younger sister who happens to be in a wheelchair go on a trip and end up taking a wrong turn where they encounter Leatherface. We've already gotten a poster for this movie. I like the look of the poster. They're promising us something really scary and gory even though I think the best remake slash reboots of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise was the 2003 and 2007 version. And I'm already scared with this new reboot because two weeks into filming, they had to fire the director and replace him because the studio did not like how the movie was coming out. So... Here's hoping this one's good. Another movie with no release date, we have Malignant, which is a film being directed by James Wan, the guy who's brought us a lot of classic horror movies in our time. And although things are still very hush-hush quiet about what this project is, and we've only gotten a few photos, it's James Wan, the man I think is super talented, has a way of telling horror really well, so I can't wait to see what he's cooked up there for us. A horror movie by Blumhouse that was getting a lot of good reviews by critics, even though the public has not seen it, was a movie entitled titled Run Sweetheart Run. The premise of this movie is a woman runs for her life through the streets of Los Angeles when her seemingly charming date suddenly turns violent. It's supposed to be an open commentary on toxic masculinity and kind of open the door to that conversation, so why not? Another franchise that is possibly coming back in 2021 that they've already confirmed is Insidious 5. But then again, even though this is Insidious 5, it will be a direct sequel to Insidious 2, kind of ignoring Insidious 3 and 4. This one is being directed by Patrick Wilson himself who starred in the first two Insidious movies. We are bringing back the original cast of those first two films and following that family years later seeing what life is like after you've experienced a real paranormal event like that and had to continue living to then only have that paranormal situation happen one more time. I think this is a real fascinating idea so cool that they went ahead and brought this up because Insidious was one of those rare horror movies that was PG-13 that still scared the crap out of me so hopefully they can pull off something great here too. Bringing me to Willy's Wonderland, the horror movie I kind of am really looking forward to in 2021 because we've just been gaining this co-following, really wanting to see what this movie is about. With Willy's Wonderland, we'll be following Nicolas Cage who plays a janitor at an amusement park who has to battle a bunch of animatronic puppets that come to life and go after a bunch of young adults. The little teaser that they released hooked me in right away. The great design and look of these animatronic puppets that they're going to be having that Nicolas Cage is going gonna have to be battling also look fantastic even though this is a low budget horror movie i think it has the makings to absolutely be a cult hit and probably give five nights at freddy's a run for their money if not want to go ahead and step up their game so that they can compete with what nicholas cage is bringing to the table but those are just the horror movies that are up and coming in 2021 i know there's still a lot of stuff up and coming in 2021 that aren't movie related like the chucky tv series we're going to be getting on the sci-fi channel even hbo is going to be coming out with a pinhead series aka hell Razor, and then there's always those surprise horror movies that we never hear about until a month away from their release. Be sure you guys are leaving your most anticipated list down below just like I did so you can check out my list in the pinned comment. Be sure to also like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at 3C Film Review. As always, I'm Chris. Take care.